Welcome back to the Motorhome Map Podcast. In today's episode of the Motorhome Map Podcast, we talk to a man whose lithium battery exploded and destroyed his motorhome. So are lithium batteries more dangerous? We dig and delve into that one. Uh, In the news are the new 20 mile an hour speed limit law in Wales a good thing? No, definitely not. They're a stupid idea, aren't they? Really? I couldn't possibly comment. (laughs) Bark. (laughs) <laughs> and we answer your questions on winter storage, Thetford toilet bowls, toilets again, Keith, and towing with an A-frame trailer. Welcome to the Motorhome Matt podcast. I'm Keith Gooden. And I'm Motorhome Matt. Industry insights, expert advice for the world of motorhomes, caravans and camper vans brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. Now, please do remember to follow on your favourite podcast app and subscribe on YouTube. Click the little bell and hit the subscribe button. Brought to you by arabasecreative.co.uk. OK, let's delve into the news straight away, shall we? That 20 mile an hour limit in Wales, it began on the 17th of September 2023. They began enforcing it on the 8th of January 2024. Oh, joy. If you've never heard of this, basically everything that was 30 has gone down to 20 now. So the sort of standard default speed limit in Wales is now 20 miles an hour. A lot of to and fro in, a lot of protesting, a lot of people saying it's a good thing as well questioning whether the police are going to be enforcing it properly it's a yeah. hot potato in Taffland. in Taffland, yes. indeed <laughs> well apparently now the police are enforcing it so you're going to get a hundred pound fine or six penalty points if you go over 20 miles an hour as in a built-up area if it's marked differently to 20 miles an hour then clearly it's not 20 miles an hour no, but what's sure. it like driving a motorhome at 20 miles an hour is it good for the vehicle uh, is it good for the vehicle? That's a good question. I guess if you only ever drove it at 20 miles per hour, probably not. You're going to ruin the clutch, aren't you? Uh, this, this is not about being good for the car, though, is it? This is about being safe for pedestrians. I think 20 miles an hour is a good idea if you're the pedestrian that gets hit and, you, and the car's only doing 20. I think that's the point. Uh, and I guess emissions are lower at that speed. That's another claim by the people who enforce these things. I'll tell you what's interesting, though. Uh, there's a note on here that the police are only enforcing this if you go over 10% plus four mile an hour, so 26 miles per hour, mm-hmm. and then it's enforced. So can't we just go around with a Sharpie and turn all the zeros into sixes? <laughs> yeah. Well, well, like in America, the speed limits there, they've got the fives in the speed limits. It's 25 and 35 true. and 45 and 55. And wouldn't that be more sensible in this country as well? I take your point about if you're hit at 20, you're far less likely to have a severe injury or be killed than at 30 miles an hour. But at 25 miles an hour, that's a still a pretty uh, low speed. And I would argue, certainly when I'm looking at my Volvo clutch, it's going to be better for the clutch. It doesn't like 20 miles an hour. Oh, no, no, same. I've got a car which is juddering at 20 mile an hour, but then, you know, I'm in fifth gear, so that'd be why. <laughs> Pardon me, just got to pick the pen You're up. just throwing your pen on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> He's just throwing the studio around. <laughs> Hang on. Okay, uh, and of course... And, of course, the First Minister in Wales has resigned. Uh, He's the man that heads up the government. Could be a woman elected, but there is an election going to take place to replace the First Minister. And this, Mm. of course, is now... uh, It's a political issue. Yeah, I know. I think politicians are going to jump on this, aren't they? We're seeing the political parties go polemic on this, aren't we? The Conservatives and, oh, Labour, yep. So it's going to be an interesting year. Mm. Or is it? But it has no impact to when you're driving a motorhome now. Well, and you've got to do 20 mile an hour in Wales. Mm. So Physically on, on the vehicle? Uh, no, no different to a car. It's still, a, mm. if it's a combustion engine, then, you know, as you say, the clutch on your Volvo. Mind you, I've seen your, your driving. <laughs> you've smelt it. I don't think the 20 <laughs> mile per hour is the problem there. See, see, he smelt it. Smelt it. He dealt it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keith's here. How do you know? I can smell his clutch. <laughs> uh, OK, so we'll keep an eye on that one and see how it goes. But if you are a motorhoming or caravanning in Wales, keep an eye on those speed limits and they are enforcing it. Uh, OK, then uh, let's do the product of the week. That leisure shop product of the week, Matt. What have we got? Well, we got a big sale on. Uh, so it's more the offer of the week. So we've got a spend and save sale. This is awesome. So it's perfect for stocking up on your 2024 travel essentials. Also, there's still some stock from 2023 
left, uh, which you can grab. Uh, some of the prices are creeping up a little bit this year. Not as much as we thought, but there's still some savings to be had. So the spend and save sale then, Matt, at that leisureshop.com sounds good to me. It what is. are the savings? So easy. So £10 off when you spend £85, £20 off when you spend £160, or £30 off when you spend £250, so mm. more than 10%. Get online. £10 off yeah. when you spend £85 or over, I presume. Or over, yeah. yeah. £20 off when you get up to £160 and £30 off when you spend £250. Still plenty of uh, stuff on the shelves and as Matt says, yeah. some of our last year's stuff. And prices are creeping up for 2024. So uh, take a look around, get on the website, uh, get spending and save yourself some money. We And also, we've got loads of new products coming into stock this year from uh, from the Netherlands. We've got a whole range of new Bowcamp product. If you've seen the shop team at any of the shows uh, in 2023, you'll have seen some of the beautiful chairs and accessories that we sell. They are stunning. Uh, and we have committed to a whole range of new product from them. So we're really excited. That should arrive with us in end of this month, early February. Uh, and uh, a lot of it, in fact, I'm hoping all of it will be on display at the NEC show in Birmingham in February. So come and see us there. Fabaruni. It's the Motorhome Matt podcast with me, Keith Gooden. And with me, Motorhome Matt. Brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. The main part of our podcast this week, Matt, lithium batteries. Are yeah. they more dangerous? We've got a story to tell, haven't we? We have, yeah. I dropped one on my toe and yes, it blew me out. No, I didn't. <laughs> um, but it would hurt. Are they more dangerous? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we have a story of one actually exploding. This is not a story in the pub playing darts and overhearing another conversation. Uh, this is a real, true story, first-hand, from a gentleman who put a lithium battery in his motorhome and it exploded. OK, first of all, before we launch into that, what is the difference between a lithium battery and a different, another, another sort of... Battery? A lead-acid battery, yeah. typically, yeah, or a gel battery. So the big difference is longevity of use, so how long the charge stays high... Uh, and uh, it, the way it drains. So a lead-acid battery has a kind of a diagonal drain line, if you know what I mean. They slowly discharge over time, whereas a lithium battery remains very level and then suddenly will drop. Um, and they last a lot longer than a lead-acid battery in terms of usable life um, per charge. So, And the cycles that you can charge, discharge, charge, discharge are massive compared to a lead acid battery so um, they're ideal if you're doing a lot of off-grid camping and you want power in your van a lot of the uh, modern brand new motorhomes are being fitted with lithium batteries and we're seeing an increase a huge growth in number of people that want to do a lithium battery install in their van and get rid of the lead acid battery that's in there now they are more efficient it is up to the minute battery technology we don't want to scare you that's not the intention this is just a story that we've come across okay a true story uh, with one of our listeners simon fox owned an adria twin and the lithium system blew up yeah it did and i got to caught up with simon i actually saw the pictures he posted of his van post the explosion uh, and if you're watching on youtube you'll see a picture of them in a minute uh, but he was very very lucky because it blew up when he wasn't in it now i saw simon share his story on facebook asked him to share with me a little more about it so simon you were the proud owner of an adria twin uh, which came to an early demise what happened so we'd um my wife and i had uh, we'd, we'd had caravans for a few years several several caravans um, we'd always gone for something funky, like we had the the tab teardrop cameras, uh, caravan, sorry, and then we had the uh, an, uh, a canal sport and fun, um, and they were great caravans. We had some great holidays in them, uh, but then we decided, I just don't know why, just uh, we liked the idea of having a van, and we met a couple uh, in France who had an Adria twin, and they just were raving about how good it was. So we put a deposit down and we were told it was going to be sort of a 14 to 18 month waiting list at the time. Um, I think this was, I'm trying to think, we put it uh, beginning, beginning of 22. Mm -hmm. Yeah, beginning of 22. I think February, March, March, we, we put the um, deposit down and ordered it. Um, uh, we ordered it in, in, in the orange, in Baltic yeah. orange. 
Uh, we were very excited. We had a few uh, extras and options we needed. Good choice um, of colour. And that was that. And then we sat back and waited. We don't like white boxes. We're not fans. That's probably why we had the tabs, which were yellow and orange, and the canal switch was you know had lots of graphics on it. We're not yeah. fans of white boxes. So we, we we you know we got the van and we picked it all out and uh, and then unfortunately in the intervening fourteen months before it arrived, my wife and I separated. Um, and she said, "Look, you have the van because you know I, I don't think I'll use it, and it, it would suit you more." Uh, so I took the van and uh, and, and sort of thought, "Well, I'll, I'll plan some holidays with it." Uh, and uh, I had a friend who was getting uh, married in Villamora in Portugal, so I thought that's an ideal first trip. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna, oh, sorry. Uh, an ideal first trip. We were going um, to to go down to drive down through Spain. Um, to southern Portugal, Villamora, and attend this wedding, and then slowly make my way back home. Um, and it's just me and the dog. So uh, I said I was going to go to the wedding, and I booked my crossing on the uh, on the ferry, uh, Plymouth Santander. And I thought because I'm going to need to do this on a budget because of the separation, uh, you know, and, and campsites are quite expensive now. You, you can easily pay, especially as we were high season. We were traveling July and August. You need to be quite light just to park your camper. Hmm. So um, I thought I, I, I'd read a bit about a lithium battery business and I thought I'll get something installed, which means I can stay off grid for maybe a week at a time without, you know, and everything would function. So I went to a local company and um, they, it was very good. They said yes. Um, they ordered all the parts, uh, the solar converters and all the bits and bobs. And they, they said to me, well, look, you, you order the battery because you seem to know what you want. And I didn't know what I wanted. It was a KS Energy 210 uh, kilowatt hour um, on seat to fit the Fiat Ducato. So it would just be a direct replacement under the passenger seat, the existing leisure battery. Um, so that's what we did. That's what we did. They uh, they fitted the solar panel, did it. It was a great job, really neat, neat nice integration. Uh, everything was working fine. It wasn't cheap. Um, I think I think all in all, with with, with the batch cost of the battery, it was over three thousand pounds to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, off I went uh, and travelled down to Portugal, and then attended the wedding, and then travelled back slowly through Spain and France, uh, up into the Netherlands, and then back home. Um, and the solar panels and the and the leisure battery were just faultless. I mean, I could I could easily. I mean, it was very sunny and hot, uh, and I could easily be off off grid. And everything was working perfectly. You know, the, the hot waters, the showers, uh, the fridge, uh, everything. Even, you know, even I got some nice 12 volt fans to keep us cool at night and they were blowing all night. Mm. And everything was great. I thought, this is a great idea. And, you know, how clever I am having the lithium batteries and, and doing this. Um, and then when I got back, my wife said to me, um, Look, I don't really want you in the house anymore, but you can keep the van in the driveway until your house is ready. My house, my new house was about two weeks off being ready for me to move into. So I uh, I was living in the van on the driveway uh, with the dog. And um, So you were living I, in the I, van full time at this point, were you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, which is fine. It's great fun. Uh, and, and, and for one person and a dog, you know, it was a, a 6.4 meter. It was, you know, probably too big. But, you know, it was great. We, we, we were fine. And then I was out one Sunday uh, attending a charity event and I got a, a phone call from my, my, my wife saying um, there's been a loud bang and there's smoke coming out of your car out of, out of the van and it's on fire and I've got the fire brigade. So I, I hot legged it back to the, the house and, and, and the fire engine was there uh, in full attendance and the fire guys had all the hazmat and breathing stuff on and apparatus on because apparently uh they're quite toxic the the lithium batteries when they go up um and it took them quite a while but eventually they got the thing cooled down the fire put out and then they they lifted the battery out and dunked it in a huge vat of water underwater just because they said they can seemingly go out and then reignite again um but so they left it in water and that was it the, the van i think i've sent you some photos the van was completely burnt out everything was destroyed nothing left yeah it was a sunday i phoned uh the insurance company immediately let them know and uh put in a claim 
and they came and picked the van up within, a, I think, a week. And then within about six weeks after that, I had full payment. So you've been paid out in full? Um, I've been obviously... paid out full, yeah, for, for the actual van and for uh, the contents that are in the van. Yeah. And have you bought uh, a new van? I mean, basically, it was a market price. Um, right. I don't know if you, if you know that, uh, that, that probably, you know, a, a nearly new secondhand van uh, with just a few thousand miles on it is, is, is worth more than a new one. Yeah, at the time yours went up, it certainly that was true. Now, you mentioned uh, KS Energy was the battery that you had fitted. They had a recall yeah. issued, didn't they? Um, but when was that recall issued? Well, I got an email on, on the Wednesday following that the fire was on a Sunday afternoon. And on a Wednesday morning, I got an email from KS saying uh, that there was a fault, not with all their batteries, uh, just with this particular model, the 210 under seat. Um, uh, and it had a component which was liable to short and cause a fire. And it was at any stage. It could have been plugged in. You could have been driving. You could have been using, you know, at any stage that could have uh, shorted and gone off. And, and, and it did. Um, and their advice was to disconnect the battery, uh, uh, dis discharge it if they could, if you could. And uh, they would organize collection and a, repl a replacement. So I, ju I just wrote back to them and said, uh, with the photos saying, I'm afraid you're three days too late with this one. It's already gone up. Uh, wow. Well, thank goodness. Simon, it happened when you weren't in it, having spent all that time in it. Yeah, my, my wife said that, um, my ex-wife said that it, it was um, a loud bang. She, she actually thought something had fallen down outside the house or almost like a backfire or, you know, it was a big thud. So had I been actually sat, uh, as, as I did every night, on those seats watching telly um, with the dog... Uh, I think it would have been a, a life-changing injury. Yeah. Well, it could have been worse than that. I think Simon could have not. Well, I guess. I, I actually, uh, my personal view is that uh, uh, you know a life-changing injury is the worst. But you mm. know, um, yes, I know I what you mean. Sort of philosophical debate all the time. Uh, yes. Yeah, I was extremely lucky that it actually went up while I was out and not in the van because. I probably was spending 12 hours a day in the van at that time. Wow. Well, look, thank you, Simon, so much for sharing the story. Um, it's a it's a bit of an urban myth that this happens, um, but it's great to talk to someone yeah. firsthand to whom it happened to. Uh, so tell me, what's next? You've been paid out. Is there another motorhome on order? No. Uh, with my, my love of lithium batteries, um, I, I've just bought myself a... a an MG, a second-hand MG electric car, um, and I fitted some roof rails, and I'm, I'm, I'm about to uh, to get a, a tent box, um, rooftop tent. Um, so what I'm going to do for my holiday this year and future holidays is I'm, I'm going to work with the rooftop tent. Um, the dog will sleep happily in the in the boot of the car. I'll sleep on top. Um, we'll have um, you know various things with us to make it more comfortable sort of awnings and, and things to sit in and tables and chairs and i think i can camp perfectly well doing that so uh, we're going to tour hopefully in may in the new setup brilliant well i wish you many happy and safe adventures in your tent box i must admit yeah. i'd rather be in an adria twin uh <laughs> sure but it's lovely to see yeah. you simon and thank you again for sharing your story we got in touch with the manufacturers of the battery, KS Energy, and they gave us this statement. Matt? Yeah, Stuart Allen and Richard Gleeson are managing directors at KS Energy. And uh, they said, once we became aware of the fault, we immediately reported it to the OPSS, the Office of Product Safety and Standards. And action was taken to identify and locate the affected batteries. And we are pleased to confirm that all recalled units have been successfully 
collected. They went on to say, working closely with our customers, we've ensured that replacements or suitable alternatives were provided promptly, minimising any inconvenience. Our insurers have underwritten losses on Simon Fox's motorhome and his premium should not be affected. It's important to note that all batteries currently in circulation are not affected by the recall and customers can continue to use them with confidence. They go on to say our revised product thoroughly tested and free from the potential fault found in the seat base version is now available. And we remain committed to supplying high quality products to motor home owners and the leisure community. Our dedication to safety and value for money is unwavering and we believe in providing a premium product for our customers investments sincerely Stuart Allen and Richard Gleason directors of KS Energy so there you go it was a component failure Matt so we shouldn't be afraid of lithium batteries should we uh, no, not at all, not necessarily. And, and I think the lesson from this is about the install. Um, often it's the installation that can cause the issue. And it was interesting to hear that it wasn't, on this occasion, the installation. As Simon says, he had that done professionally. This was actually a known fault of a component within the battery. So lithium batteries um, have a battery management system built into them and they can transmit a Bluetooth signal which you can then monitor the, con- the battery condition on your phone uh, or on a control panel so there, there's a lot more tech involved in a lithium battery and that's what failed a component within uh, this battery failed and when i was chatting to Stuart at ks energy he said that there were 46 batteries affected of which 30 were out in the community across england and ireland and they were able to get all of them back and replace all of them with a fully functioning corrected battery and the ones that were faulty have all been corrected so they are a great choice of lithium battery because they are they physically fit the hole under the driver's seat or the passenger seat where the battery is in a fiat ducato uh, and so it's an easy swap out in terms of space so it's a good battery for that reason which is why they are popular um, but they are now safe to use so if you're thinking of one of these then you know you can be assured the guys at KS Energy have told us they're safe. Let's talk about the installation then, shall we, Matt? Because as you say, it's not the installation. It was done professionally. But if I if I want that work done, if I want my gas boiler put in, I go you know, for a gas-safe engineer. Is there any such thing for the installation of lithium batteries in motorhomes or caravans? Yeah, good question. So, yeah, where would you start if you wanted to find a professional to in, do an installation for you? Um, I would start with the NCC, National Caravan Council's approved workshop scheme. Uh, it's hundreds of engineers across the country. Some are mobile, some are bricks and mortar type places where you go uh, and have the work done. Uh, there's also the MCEA, Motor, Motor Home Caravan Engineers Association. Um, these guys go through rigorous checks annually uh, and they sometimes get inspected as well uh, and they have to comply to certain standards Um, and it means that if they are registered with one of these bodies and you feel that their work is substandard you can report them to this body uh, and there are penalties for them I mean they could be struck off Um, but I would always be looking for for an engineer who is part of either the AWS or MCA. And remember your rights aren't affected by going through that organisation you still have your full consumer rights Absolutely. Uh, You're not signing anything away. Uh, You've been talking to somebody about this, haven't you? Yeah, so I thought I would go and get in touch with uh, a professional. Um, And not only are these guys Motem engineers, they are actually lithium battery nerds. Um, (laughs) They live and breathe it. Uh, They're a company called Blue Fix, and they were exhibiting at a show we were also exhibiting at. And I spoke to Mark Street, who's one of the directors at Blue Fix. So, Mark, off camera, you were telling me there are things people need to consider before doing a lithium install. What are those things? Yeah, I mean, um, I think the first thing to consider is lithium is not a drop-in replacement for lead acid or AGM. Um, There are things you have to consider. I mean, the wiring, for one, is it thick enough? Can it take the high amps that the lithium can will generate in your system it, it, it probably isn't can you charge it properly is it over going to overload your charges is it fused correctly do you have isolation if you can't turn it all off which in a lot of these motorhomes we've seen you can't they don't have it and with the manufacturer they don't come with any kind of form of isolation so you simply can't turn everything off you've got a switch on your control panel perhaps but you know in the electrical system there's nothing there 
So you've got no way of just turning it off if something's gone wrong. And just looking at the display that you've got here on your stand, we're recording this at the Malvin Show, um, in front of your stand, I yeah. should say. Yeah. I mean, it looks complicated, is it? It, it is complicated, yeah. It is absolutely, it can be quite complicated, but it also, it, it doesn't need to be, if that makes sense. You know, if you've got the right equipment, it's quite easy. And is it something someone can do themselves then? With the right guidance, perhaps, um, but I would say if you're going to research it or come and see us or someone like us, get a professional opinion, get some ideas on how it should be done, look at YouTube videos, but really and truly, it's probably a job for a professional, especially in these big motorhomes. Mm. They're quite complicated. Yeah. You can't just you know, mess around the electrics and these things and hope that nothing goes wrong. It's not worth taking the risk, then, is what you're saying? I can't see it, not myself. You know, you, you need, my homes cost a lot of money, don't they? Yeah. Lithium batteries cost a lot of money. So why not spend a few extra quid and get it done properly? And as we know, when it goes wrong, it goes horribly it wrong. It goes horribly wrong, yeah, absolutely. Mark, thanks, buddy. You're most welcome. Thank you very much for coming. So that's Mark, street director at Blue Fix. He recommends that you get uh, lithium batteries installed professionally. So just quickly in summary uh, then, Matt, um, lithium iron, more complicated than lead acid mm. batteries. What are the comparisons? You mentioned earlier on about charge. Is, is that the only benefit? Uh, no, well, length of charge, certainly how long they stay charged for, um, ability to use them all year off grid. Uh, there's a whole range of benefits, really. I mean, if you're the big question is, and we did a whole episode on this, you remember, with Oakley from Bristol Caravans. And the first question is, well, do I need lithium? You know, and should I get it? And you know, his point was, uh, which he agreed with me, was, well, if you're if you're just going to go to a campsite and hook up, and then you're going to drive somewhere and hook up. You don't need a lithium battery. If you're going to be off grid for days at a time, many days at a time, and you want to consume a lot of power when you're there, so you want to run a laptop or, you know, like you, you want to run your hairdryer for extensive periods, then, you know, then a lithium battery could be really, really useful. But if you're not doing that, you know, you don't need a lithium ion install. You just, you just don't need it. So they are expensive. I mean, the battery in question here that caught fire is over a thousand pounds before you have it fitted. And then the install, as Simon said, I think it said two or three K to have it all installed. When we were up at Bristol Caravans in that episode, and you can listen or watch that on YouTube, uh, that was a six K install that we were looking at. I know installs that have cost fifteen grand. So that are you know multi lithium batteries with lots of monitoring and so on. So it is a huge expense uh, compared to replacing it with a two hundred pound lead acid battery. Um, so that's the big consideration, really. And the question really is, do you need it? Uh, there's an element of keeping up with the Joneses here, I think. Yeah, absolutely. So if you need it, have it installed. But remember, uh, keep your eye on industry news. Keep listening and watching the podcast here as well, because if there's a recall, you yeah. need to take note of it. Now, this uh, accident, in inverted commas, this incident we've been talking about today happened not because of the, the meat of the battery itself. It was the components surrounding it. And component failure happens or can happen in practically anything at any time. So keep yeah. an eye on those uh, ma manufacturers' uh, recall notices. If you stay tuned to the podcast, we'll certainly tell you uh, about them. And fill out your warranty form. I did well, say... that's the thing, yeah. yeah I said a thing. little bit earlier, none of this affects your consumer rights. No. But one of the great benefits of the warranty uh, form means you have, therefore, a legal uh, uh, contract uh, with the supplier of the uh, goods and s or services. And uh, the important thing is... If even though it doesn't affect your consumer rights, it enhances them, doesn't it? It does. And it also means, though, and in this scenario, this is what was most important, is that the manufacturer can get in touch with you. So if they've got a problem, they can reach you and tell you there's a problem. Because, you know, Simon did get an alert to the fact that there was a recall on this battery. Sadly, three days too late. Uh, but nonetheless... KS Energy were able to contact all their customers who bought from them uh, and you know because you buy direct they will have your details but you do, how often do you buy directly from a manufacturer if you buy it online from a reseller fill out that warranty card particularly with something like this I mean how often do you see it and go ah oh, waste of time well, well it, you do you're, you're so excited you're opening the box and all the rest of it yeah. uh, and the, this stuff drops out and yeah, you just forget about it but it does bring to light for me the importance of the warranty card yeah. Yeah. and actually for something we don't always 
always think about the fact the manufacturer can get in touch with me that's the key uh, thing isn't it so if yeah. there is a recall uh, they can, can get in touch with you directly so i hope that's been useful to you a horror story but uh, it seems that the manufacturer and retailer did the right thing all's well that ends well just be alert absolutely just be alert the bit i love most about this story is that simon is now driving around in an ev It's the Motorhome Matt podcast with me, Keith Gooden. And with me, Motorhome Matt. Brought to you by thatleisureshop.com. It is, well, a Q&A where you ask the questions and Motorhome Matt, our expert, answers them for you. And if he doesn't know, he'll find somebody that does. Uh, first of all, we have Mark in Cambridgeshire. Hello, Matt. And your mattress psychic. Join your podcast. Thank you. Regarding your latest podcast, The Winter Storage... I have a motorhome, new, only picked up a couple of weeks ago, which has the Fiat chassis with the stop-start keyless go, blah, blah, blah. The solar panels, I've had two solar panels, 310 watt on the roof, with a Victron controller. I was told from the outset when we were talking about it that due to the keyless go, etc., the solar panel wouldn't be able to charge the chassis main battery only the leisure batteries uh, this is the case they have fitted it in uh, such so um this wasn't mentioned in your podcast are other people in the same position is that the case are they being over cautious i wonder i might have to put up i guess speak to fiat and see if there is a controller itself that will protect that system anyway i'd like to um hear your views on that thank you very much that's Mark in Cambridgeshire addressing you directly there, uh, Matt. And what did he call me? You, I'm not sure. Mattress sidekick. Mattress. <laughs> I couldn't catch what you said, Mark. What did you say? Normally, you get called Chris. I didn't get Chris. Chris. <laughs> Your buddy, yeah. your partner in crime. What's the answer? So, uh, what was the question? <laughs> so, I was intrigued by this question, Mark, and I have to say, uh, we've not had anyone come to us with a request for a solar to charge a Fiat Ducato with a start-stop. Um, so, I went off and asked a few people who maybe had, uh, and none of them were familiar with this being a problem and they said well yeah just connect it up as normal uh the agm battery that is your uh, starter battery that's going to manage the start stop is more than capable of taking a charge from a solar panel via split relay so i don't see that there's an issue and i'm intrigued as to why this installer thought there was uh some vehicles have a separate battery for start stop that's not the case on the fiat ducato um the feedback i've been given is that it wouldn't be an issue so i would wonder mark whether you could go back to them and find out why uh, and come back to me because i don't see that this is an issue i was not aware that it was an issue and i've asked three people and they've all said no problem bit so, more detail from the retail yeah <laughs> detail from the retail <laughs> well if you're listening to this and you're a solar expert then please if you've got a different view and you think no it would be a problem because i'd love to know what the problem is and why Sean Batch is in Scunthorpe. He's written to us. Hi, Matt. Just got an old Auto Trail Chieftain and it has a Thetford 200 toilet in it. Is there anything that will increase the size of the seat for a larger person? This Sean has a huge bottom, evidently. A toilet bowl he wants to increase the size of. Yeah. It's actually... So it's not the seat then? Because I changed bowl to seat thinking, that is he having difficulty sitting on it? Is, it? is it the sheer volume that he's producing which is the issue? I think he's just got a big bum. Right, OK. No I problem. think he just wants a bigger yeah. bowl. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've not seen a picture of Sean, so I can't vouch for his him. bum. No, and I yeah. don't want one either. Thanks, Sean, for the offer. Yeah, I'll Very tell you kind what, of you. We get a lot more hits on the, uh, on the websites if yeah. you do supply a picture. Yeah, not the right sort of hits there, I'm afraid. <laughs> You know what? That's a good question, Sean. And I'm sure you're not the only one who would wish they had a bigger toilet. Uh, but I am not aware. Or that, a smaller bum. Or a smaller <laughs> yeah. bum. Well, yeah, that you might be able to change, perhaps. But I'm not aware that Thetford make a bigger toilet bowl, you know. Um, they are all pretty much the same tiny size. I mean, I've got a small bum. But even, you know, I find them uncomfortable. They are small. Who's told you that, then? Eh? All the women in my life. <laughs> all the women in his life. Both of them. Mm. Yeah, my mum and my other half. My mum has never commented on the size of my bottom. No, nor did mine, yeah. to be fair. <laughs> 
Anyway, shall we move on quickly? Yeah, please. Anyway, yeah. thanks, Sean. Next. <laughs> Martin Pratt's in the East Midlands. Can we tow a car in the Republic of Ireland with an A-frame? Since, Ooh. as you cannot in most EU countries. My wife is disabled and the car makes getting about for her easier. Uh, we have an auto trail Apache 634 and tow a Fiat 500. A Cinquecento. No, it's Fiat 500. Is, Not, diff- is it different? Different car. Is yeah, it? different car. Nice, nice rig, as we say in the in the industry. You know, that's a good question. I, I'm not sure I know the answer to this categorically. Uh, in Southern Ireland, so yeah, the Republic of Ireland, that's right, isn't it? Era, correct. Um, then the rules are the same as the EU. And in France and Spain, they take a dim view of it, where such a bit of kit as an A-frame, where you tow the car behind the motorhome, is for recovery purposes only. Now, I guess, therefore the same rules would apply in Southern Ireland. But I don't know anyone that's been stopped on this. I've only recently joined a group on Facebook, actually, which is all about um, tow frames and A-frames on motorhomes. Uh, And I bet somebody in there would know the answer. So if you're on Facebook, that's worth looking up that group and pose the question in there. Maybe you've been to Ireland and you've towed a car and you've been stopped, or maybe you've not. Uh, I'd love to know because, you know what, I've never done it in Ireland. So uh, I've been stopped in Italy and in France. Uh, In fact, going through the Mont Blanc tunnel, we were made to take the car off. One of us had to drive the car through and, of course, pay the second toll. So um, they don't like them on the continent. Uh, And the only answer there is to tow the car on a trailer, uh, which, as we've said before, then means when you arrive on the campsite, you're dealing with three vehicles, the motorhome, the car and the trailer. Mm. Um, And you have a GB or, sorry, UK Mm. sticker on all of them. Um, So, yeah, Ireland, don't know, is the honest answer. Never done it. Look it up, because these laws also change from year to year and the highway codes in the different countries. So uh, what was right last year might not be uh, right this year. Matt, is, he's, not, he's not dodging the question, but no. you, know, you, do need to look it, you do need to look it up. Well, the uh, EU, EU rules would apply. What's the difference between an A-frame and a trailer? You just, you just said... So on an A-frame, the car, all four wheels on the car are on the ground. Ah, yeah. I passed one on the motorway up here today. Did you? Yes. Right, okay. Whereas on a trailer, obviously, it's on all four wheels are off the ground. Um, and they are, an A frame is considered a recovery device on the continent. And the big debate is always about how efficient the brakes on the car are. So normally, brakes are servo assisted, which is powered by the engine. When you're towing it, the engine isn't running. So the brakes are deemed to be less efficient. However, A-frame manufacturers will tell you that's not the case, that the brakes are suitably efficient to pass an MOT, but on the continent, they are considered a recovery device. So whatever the facts are about brake efficiency, if that gendarmerie is telling you, get the car off and drive it, you have no choice. You are driving it. So lots of people getting stopped in Spain, certainly towing on an A-frame. And a little tip for you, by the way, uh, never argue with a man with a gun. Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. Or my uh, mum. <laughs> Who thinks your bottom is very small? She's lovely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way... So is my bum. If you've got a question for us, we'd love to hear it. We'd love to try and answer it for you. Uh, go on to Ask Matt, which is mhmp.info forward slash Ask Matt. Motorhome Matt Podcast, mhmp. You get it? mhmp.info forward slash Ask Matt. And we would love it if you would leave us a review. If you're listening on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, in both places you can leave us a review there uh, and you can do that by going to mhmp.info forward slash review and you can subscribe on youtube that's sponsored isn't it who buy matt arabasecreative.co.uk thank you guys <laughs>